and welcome to the Weekend Spread. I'm your host, Bobby Howard. With me, we got Jameson, we got Ty, and we got the Captain Boat and Blake for our Week 7 slate. A uh, quick look at our standings. Uh, Ty is in the lead at 29 and 32 by virtue of his Pot of Greed pick, uh, followed behind Jameson and Blake, who are just a step behind because they have not used Pot of Greed. Uh, and then I am uh, just just nipping at their heels at 27 and 33. Um, guys, another wild week. Uh, a couple bad beats there. Um, Ty, I, I, you had a great week, though. How, how, you, how did you feel about your uh, slate? Uh, you know, I wasn't crazy about the slate, but you uh, you pick the slate that you get and you, you do the best with it. Super happy with my wild card, finally, uh, with Arizona State. You were literally, I believe, a com- you were a BSOU touchdown and a uh, half a point in the Iowa game away from going undefeated on your slate. Because you were the only one who picked Texas, and uh, Penn State just barely, barely failed to cover. So we almost had true greatness there. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not at all mad about the OU one. Thankfully, that was whew. that was it was too awesome to be upset about for sure. Um, all right, Blake, how are you feeling about everything? Good, honestly. Like last week, it's like if you're gonna play bad, at least like have your slate be bad because the games are so crazy. We literally had a game, I think, in every single slot that was awesome with OU Texas, Iowa Penn State, then Texas A&M to Alabama to finish up the night. And so I would love if something similar happened this week when uh, TCU comes rolling into OU, but we shall see, and we'll get there later tonight. But hopefully just continue the madness of this year because this year's just been awesome. Horrible yeah. year to gamble, awesome year to watch. I mean, 100% fully, fully agree. Jameson, your thoughts on everything so far? One, Penn State game, just complete shit. Because, you know, our boy Blake, you know, goes down with an injury in the second quarter. And they were just working him. And then Iowa just weasels their way back. Iowa did not deserve to win that game. For the record, we were right on that pick. We were right that Penn State was the better team. It's all because... (laughs) Until the quarterback goes down. I mean, that's just kind of how that happens, but... Um, I, I gotta say, you're very. Everyone is very, very welcome for me picking Alabama as my wild card, thus jinxing the tide and <laughs> sinking them. So you know, I, I took I took the dive for y'all. So everyone, you're welcome. And All how right. bad of a USC pick was that? I just was wanting to pick a night game. That like, what was? I wasn't even reasoning. I was just like, screw it. I was throwing darts. That was that was so bad. I need to reason. No, Utah's a life. different Utah's a different team now with their new quarterback after Charlie Honestly. Brewer transferred. New team. Yeah. They could the Texas the Texas pick. transfer right. Yep, I got that Utah. Rising? I got that. Yep. Oh, I man. got that Utah uh, to win the Pac-12 future that has finally given some life <laughs> after. I think, honestly, bull take, this doesn't count versus anything, but I'm slamming a little bit of Cal to upset Oregon tomorrow and just blow the Pac-12 wide open. That's like a plus 440 underdog. Like, I think I, it, they might blow it wide open. Is it in Austin or is it uh, in Berkeley? Oh, no, it's 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 in Eugene. Like, it's going to okay. be in, yep. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, no, that, that would be a that'd be a real big screw up there. Anyways, let's get started with our slate here. First up, we got number eleven Kentucky, the maybe the surprise team of the entire uh, run here at Georgia, uh, who has just been undoubtedly the best team uh, in college football. I would have to say, um, UGA favored by twenty three and a half, or actually no, this is a uh, twenty three. The line is. Sh- the line should be 23. I'm sorry. Uh, so, Georgia favored by 23. Uh, Ty, you will start us off here. What do you think about the Bulldogs' is the Bulldogs' domination this season? Uh, do you think it continues against uh, Mark Stoops and the Kentucky Wildcats? Let me tell you what. This is a classic trap game when it comes to betting. Because here's the thing. Here's what Roulette taught me our freshman year of, of college is that you don't go against the trend, and that is the trap here. This line seems super, super high, but Georgia has not been disappointing. So you don't go against the trend, no matter how counterintuitive it seems. Sometimes you got to stick to your what you know is right when everything else in the world is telling you that it's wrong. So what I want everyone to do 
is slam that Georgia 23 uh, because I think it's I think it's great. Georgia has been the the ruiner of Cinderella stories so far this season, uh, and I expect that to continue again here. So 23, pretty high. Uh, don't like it, but I think Georgia has it. I love it. Blake, you feeling the uh, the – Feeling the dogs here? Nope, I'm in agreement with Ty. We've seen this game once already this year, and that was Georgia, Arkansas. Like, this is just a repeat. This Kentucky team, they're one dimensional, just like Arkansas is. Arkansas can throw maybe even a little bit better, but Kentucky's a one dimensional run team. Will Levis has done a really good job, I think, revitalizing just Kentucky football and people being happy about it, but. We saw him against Florida, and he was not good versus Florida. Like, his passer rating was in the 30s or 40s, according to PFF. Like, he just did not show out against a good defense, and Georgia's defense is 10 billion times better than whatever Florida is going to throw out. I think Georgia can wake up, score 30. I don't even see Kentucky scoring 10 in this game. I'm on Kentucky under 9.5 points for this entire game. Like, I think they're just going to dominate him. So give me give me Georgia and the huge line. I don't care. I like, I, gotta say, I like how Blake took Georgia minus twenty three with a hypothetical score of thirty to ten. No, I'm saying under. I'm saying under. Uh, I, I said they're going to score under nine and a half points. Oh, okay. So I think they're okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Will Levis. Honestly, that's a guy who we haven't talked about enough. Uh, despite the fact that the man's a walking meme slash weird things. You know, going from eating the banana with the peel on it, and he's, he's just a weird dude. Uh, definitely not enough shine on the schooner pod. Um, even though he'd be a natural schooner pod type of guy. All right, yep. Jameson, who do you got next? This is really tough for me. Both teams have been doing really well against the spread. Um, both teams have been surprising. You know, six and zero, five and one against the spread. Both those teams. Georgia has been putting up absurd lines and then covering them. Um, but it's. I, I'm just I gotta go Kentucky. They just show I understand the the reasoning for it. Their offense is not as worrisome, but Georgia's off, offense also has definitely been worrisome for me. Um, I, I feel like they just Kentucky keeps it barely close enough. Um, but this is a tough one for me. I'm gonna go Kentucky. Yeah, I, I've learned my lesson here with betting against UGA. I I, I, I just can't. I, I think they somehow find a way to cover uh, this 23 point spread. Um, Kentucky, you know, great story and everything, but this is UGA is just a, a cut above here. Um, so give me give me the dogs uh, to cover 23 points. Okay, I have our lines fixed for the rest of this, so we shouldn't have that issue again. Uh, next up, we got Auburn at Arkansas. The Hogs favored by five and a half. This line has jumped up a little bit as the weeks progressed. And honestly, I, I'm going with Arkansas again. Um, I think Auburn is a bit uh, still overinflated off of that LSU win. Uh, LSU's, LSU is garbage, folks. Uh, Kentucky absolutely murdered them last week. Uh, this will be right back in Fayetteville as well. So they'll get some of that you know, home cooking back. Uh, the Hogs played very good against Ole Miss as well. So uh, give me Arkansas to bounce back, get a win against Auburn at home. Yeah, Blake and I want to get the Bo Nix experience, but it seems like when we hopped on with the Georgia, it didn't work out. Um, you know, at least they scored 10 points, but still, the Bo Nix experience is what, wasn't what I want. I was a little worried about Arkansas, but then after putting up all those points versus Ole Miss last week, and even though they lost, you know, two-point conversion could have went, you know, could have been a different story. Uh Give me Bo Nix experience again. <laughs> Give me Auburn. No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. I'm tainted. Yeah. Okay, so Bobby's completely wrong on this one. I'm going with Jameson. It's going to be Auburn. And I think, like, the thing about this line is Bobby's like, oh, Auburn's overinflated by LSU. Arkansas's overinflated by their first few games of the season and how they performed. Like, I think Ole Miss, they are good, but they are offensively good and have no defense. And that scares me. Auburn is the better running team. They're the better passing team. They're the better, like, defensively. And I think the score of the Auburn-Georgia game kind of, like, it makes it look like it wasn't, like, a game at all. But Auburn did a really good job at holding Georgia. Like, Georgia was scoring, I think, 10 points in the fourth quarter to kind of make it look more like a blowout. Like, Auburn's defense can hold. And I know Arkansas's defense can't hold worth crap. I'm going to take Bo Nix on the road. I think Auburn does everything Arkansas does just slightly better. And 
yeah, I think it's just Arkansas at the beginning of the year. They've had a great season, but I think people are overinflating really their talent and what they are. Okay, there you go. More, more love for the Bo Nix uh, train. Um, Ty, you feeling Bo Nix as well? So what Auburn is traditionally, right, is like a, a middle tier of the SEC. So they're kind of that team that's going to beat everyone else but then lose to the top in-conference opponents. That's that's who Auburn has traditionally been. You know, lose to LSU when LSU is good, lose to Bama almost always, that kind of school, okay? That's what, that's what Arkansas is now. Auburn, I don't know what they are. Auburn now is what Arkansas used to be. These two teams are freaky Friday, so I don't know – if there's going to be some sort of Freaky Friday magic and they're going to switch back right before the game and Auburn's going to win. Uh, but barring any Freaky Friday swap back magic, I have Arkansas minus five and a half here. Okay, there we go. We have a split. Um, all right, moving on to uh, a very exciting game, I think. I think this is one of the – probably the best on the Big 12. Maybe one of the best on the Big 12 slates. Uh, and it it's a future Big 12 game. Uh, BYU, number 19 BYU, traveling to Baylor, uh, Bears favored by six and a half. The Dr. Pepper Museum is going to be just popping this weekend. Uh, say it's, I, I, it's, it's going to be wild. Uh, the, the white people are going to be wilding out in Waco for sure. Um, I, but Blake, how, how much money does Magnolia make this weekend with BYU in town? Oh my God. This is like... This is one of those Super Bowl weekends, and I think it's Baylor homecoming, too. So oh, it's no. like, this is just like, it's going to be a cash cow. Waco's going to be the cash cow this weekend. They're going to make so much money. Oh, God. It, it, it's, really, it's really a perfect matchup. I, I'm, I'm here for it. But, uh, Ty, start us off. Do you think uh, BYU, uh, Road Dogs, uh, they're ranked. Do you, do you think they're going to come into Waco and get their uh, first Big 12 win of, the, of their uh, run in, in the conference? Of the year, uh, I like BYU here. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add, but I like BYU here. Hey, fair enough, fair enough. Blake, how are you feeling? No, Baylor. I know Ty's just trying. He's praying, like he's just praying that his Baylor might be the worst team in the Big Twelve take comes true, but it's not. Baylor's towards the top of the Big Twelve this year, and it's all because of Gary Bohannon. And like looking at the quarterbacks right now in the Big Twelve, you could make a case that Gary Bohannon is the best quarterback right now. Like Caleb Williams could easily surpass that in the next few weeks, but besides like Spencer Rattler, obviously gone, and then Max Duggan, of course, hasn't done crap, and then you start Spencer Sanders, nobody's gonna advocate for that. Brock Purdy disappointing, so. Gary Bohannon's been super accurate. He can get it done on both his feet and passing. And look, people are forgetting Baylor's offensive coordinator this year is Jeff Grimes, who was BYU's coordinator last year. This guy knows the BYU facilities inside and out. He knows what they're running. And they have worse talent this year than they did last year with Zach Wilson. And then the last thing on this, because I watched BYU-Boise last week. BYU looked horrible. They were not in that game at any single point. They were turning over the ball left and right. I think they've kind of lost their juice. They had they came out hot. They're losing it right now. Their injury, like, they don't even know who's quarterback right now with all the injuries. I like the fact Jeff Grimes, Gary Bohannon, and the fact that BYU slump in. Give me Baylor. I think this is going to be a big statement win for Baylor. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm on the Baylor train, and like I told you, I doubted Gary – the first, you know, couple maybe week or so of the season, and then I put my eyes to it and watch how he could sling it, and I'm I'm sold now. I really do. I believe in you as well. I think that Baylor's a scary team, especially for OU moving forward. That's a game that I'm very scared of because he's a very talented quarterback. Um, and and like you said, just BYU just look, hasn't been popping off the page recently. I, I see them downtrending. You never want to bet on a team that's downtrending. You know, they, when they start off hot and then looks like they're not playing as well. Um, you know, they're de destined for a chirp up, especially after last week with them losing to Boise. So I'm going Baylor as well. <sighs> Look, I want to pick, I want to pick BYU really, really bad. Uh, mainly because it has come to my attention that Gary Bohannon, his first name is spelled G E R R Y, which is yep. the most preposterous way to spell Gary I've ever seen. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to put my faith into a guy named like Jerry, whatever the hell. It's, it's ridiculous. So, but that being said, I, I think Baylor is really good. Uh, I'm going to atone for my sins. 
of uh, the preseason, thinking Baylor was as bad as they are, and uh, turn it around. I think I think Baylor gets this cover here. Um, you know they they've been playing really good this season. So uh, give give me the Bears at home. Uh, this line is kind of slid up as well. So it seems like the betting public has been pretty big on Baylor uh, going forward. Next up, Jameson. I know your hype. We got the Bean Man back on the slate. Texas Tech at Kansas. Uh, the Red Raider, Red Raiders favored by 16 and a half. Uh, this could be, look, if, if Tech loses this game, Max, Mac, Matt Wells needs to be fired, I think. Like, left on, left on the tarmac, fired. Um, I think, and that's my thing, I think they win. I think they get the cover it, because their backs are against the wall. They have the capability to put up, up offense, as we saw against West Virginia, but... but Look, this is a trap all the way. It's just begging begging for you to pick the bean man in Kansas. But Kansas is really bad this year. So give me the Red Raiders to uh, to get this cover. Yeah, we're slamming Texas Tech here. You know, Columbia, whenever he's gotten inserted back into that system, their offense has been playing really well. You know, Sir Roderick Thompson had three touchdowns versus y'all last week, Blake. Um, now they go to Kansas and you give them 16 and a half points to cover. I, I like that line a lot. So I'm going Tech. Tech can score points. Kansas can't. Give me Tech. Ty? Tech. <laughs> for, for the listeners at home, Ty picked up a uh, a hockey puck and with a, uh, a, a post-it note that said Actually, slam. It's a, it's a Campbell's microwave soup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I kind of thought it was a hockey puck. That's, that's funny. It, it said slam. He slammed. He slams Tech. Everyone's slamming Tech. Next up, we got a really good game in the Big 12. Number 12, uh, Oklahoma State at Texas. Uh, number 25, Texas. Horns favored by five here. Uh, this line has dipped half a point. Oklahoma State, really, really, really good in Austin this season. Or j- just overall. This season. Uh, this, well, yeah. Uh, they're, they're good. They're, they've been good this decade. Uh, I believe six straight wins in uh, Daryl K. Royal Stadium. So Ty, it is, uh, it is definitely not six straight wins because I went to a game at Texas OSU and saw Texas won oh. in like 2019. Let me check the wins of PD. I might be I'm definitely wrong on that. Uh, anyways, Ty, go ahead. Who do you got? Yeah, so normally this is where I would, uh, while we're swapping over to, and I got to make this podcast friendly, when we're swapping to the Texas pick, normally what happens on the video is I disappear and then I bring out my post-it note with a crudely drawn Texas uh, Longhorn logo on it. But the viewers can see, the listeners cannot. The uh, the hat has the golden marker on it, uh, and the golden marker does not allow the Texas marker to go on there. So the Texas thing can't come on. Uh, but again, for the listeners, if you can't see, we've got double horns up because we are riding with uh, Ellinger 2 or 3, whatever replacement this is for him. Um, in Texas to get uh, this minus five cover here. Just checked Winsipedia. They're one and five in their, or, sorry, five and one in their last six in Austin. Okay, so I've so, been to the one win. <laughs> you, you've been to the one win. Blake, Blake, are you going to Austin this weekend? No, no. no okay, yeah, so we're sticking with Texas. All right, there you go. There you go. Uh, Blake, who do you got? Yeah, so I hate this game. I'm going to ride with OSU, but it's really like, my logic is flimsy. It's just like, Texas, how do you come back from something like last week? Like, that drastically changed your season. You went from possibly beating OU to being at the top of the Big 12 and basically controlling your destiny to get to Arlington. And now you're probably on the outside looking in when it comes to this OSU team. So I'm going to take OSU. These two teams, they're two totally opposites. you got Texas, third in offense in the Big 12, Ninth in defense, and then vice versa, OSU, seventh in offense, second in defense. So they couldn't be any more different. OSU's beaten somebody in Baylor that I actually think is good and like a solid offense and solid defensive team. So I just got to go OSU. I've been doubting them all year, and I know they're just going to screw me over. Like they're going to screw me over. But OSU has the top coverage in the, uh, like, coverage team in the Big 12, and also run defense. I just can't, like, they have the potential to stop Texas, but OSU's going to screw me, but give me OSU. I'm just, this game sucks to bet. You're going to feel like an idiot on either side. 
I don't know. I love Texas here in Austin, and they have one goal now. I mean, they got a chip on their shoulders. They want to get back and beat OU in the Big 12 championship, and they need to start winning almost all of their games to do it. Um, and this game is a huge one. Obviously, going against Oklahoma State, you know, being number 12, being undefeated, this is a huge, huge game for them, and they've been showing out in, uh, in Austin rebound games um, this season. I think that Texas is a really good team, and they got caught off guard when Caleb Williams came in and completely screwed them all over, and they had a very good game overall other than, you know, you know the comeback. Casey Thompson looked really, really good. Um, you know, Bijan Robinson got stopped, but, you know, he was just doing his thing. I like Texas a lot here at minus five to beat OSU. I hate to admit it. I'm going with the horns here. I think that offense is just too dynamic, too powerful for OSU's defense. They haven't faced anything like this. Gary Bohannon, he ain't Casey Thompson. We're talking about best quarterbacks in the Big 12. Uh, you know, honestly, we'll see Caleb Williams, but right now, I, my money's on Casey Thompson right now, uh, based on what I've seen. I, I think Thompson has been really good, uh, and I think Texas has a very strong bounce-back game, uh, gets the win against uh, Oklahoma State. It's it's going to be close, but uh, I, I just think that offense and Bijan Robinson just a little too much. The problem is with Texas, I will say, a lot of their points come in the first quarter. Like, Sark has is good at game planning for the like, first quarter, first 15 plays, will beat teams that way but they can't like once the game starts and people start changing he doesn't know what to do so like we kind of saw that last week they came out hot at the first quarter and really died off so the elect i just i can't back i can't back this texas offense when they're just so electric for one fourth of the game and then just ba like basically have to hold on with all their might that it doesn't crumble it's like lincoln riley do to the extreme you know, like that that used to be the way Lincoln would do it. He'd, he'd score a bunch and then just hold on for dear life. But yeah, anyway, 20, 28 of their 48 points was in the first quarter. Like and then they just fell off, like completely fell off. That was the I, that was the most amount of points ever put up uh, against Oklahoma in the first quarter in school history, which is crazy. Yeah, so really? I don't know that. Yeah, yeah, they have it. 28. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty wild. Uh, but anyways, moving on, we got ourselves some Farmageddon action. Iowa State at K-State. Cyclones favored by six and a half. Uh, I don't know about this one. This is a total mess. Iowa State, I'm still waiting on them to just show the hell up. They have been a total wreck this season. Uh, K-State, on the other hand, they, they've been up and down. Um, Skylar Thompson, if he's healthy, I gotta say, I kind of like Kansas State. Uh... So I'm going to go with the Wildcats uh, at home. I love a home dog. Uh, I think that, that this K-State team is just slippery enough to, like, keep it close, make it happen. So give me, give me the Wildcats to, uh, to get this one. Uh, Jameson, who you got? I'm going to go Iowa State here. Um, I'm K-State, Skylar Thompson, I, I really hope this week off helped them um, because – he was slinging the ball and was destroying our secondary, but he had no business, you know, being any mobile on the, as a quarterback out there. So maybe it's changed. He didn't really get beat up for us. Took a week off, um, but I'm just balling on Iowa State having a bounce back here. There's really not much to it. Not uber confident, but I'll go Iowa State. Gotcha, Blake. I'm hopping on with Jameson. I've kind of been very critical of Iowa State, but. Like, taking the step back, like, the two teams they lost to is a Baylor team that I think is very good in the Big 12, and then an Iowa team who's going to probably be in the Big 10 championship. Like, they lost to two very good teams, and they still have a lot of good talent. And Brocktober, it's Brocktober season. Brock Purdy in October has been oh, so Bobby. <laughs> betting-wise. No, no change backs, Bobby. Because no, I have a mulligan. I have a mulligan. I haven't used it yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. You. I'm pulling the mulligan for Brocktober. Pulling the mulligan for Brocktober. You shouldn't have said oh it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, Bobby just jinxed it there. But Okay, I'm on Iowa State, minus six and a half. I pulled my one mulligan for the season. It is Man, burnt. Kansas State wins. Oh, gosh, dang it. Okay. So, Kansas State's going to win now, but uh, <laughs> back to my analysis. God, y'all realize every, like, our waffle picks are, like, 0 and 20 on this. Like... Every time we bet against our teams or 
God, Bobby. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, if <laughs> I didn't waffle, then I would have lost. So now at least I'm picking with Brocktober. And, and look, if Brocktober fails, then it's whatever. I would have lost anyways. Uh, okay. But, gosh, Bobby. K-State has a bad defense, like really bad. They allowed OSU to score the most points that have the entire season, and they played Missouri State and Tulsa, and those two teams held OSU less points. So K-State's bad on defense, really bad. Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, Ty, who, who do you got here? Yeah, Brock Tober, Iowa State, six and a half. There we go. I'm safe. I honestly it- thought about using my mulligan just to, like, See, do well, you know, like this, do it. No, like this K State defense is so bad, but dang it, Bobby, dang it. Here's the thing, Blake. You were still giving your pick, so you could have just said not so fast, like Lee Corso, and then it would have been no. totally fine. Because I like look at the calendar every once in a while and know that Buck Purdy is the Iowa and State know that it's October. So I can I can make that reasonable, easy deduction. That's nothing. That there, there you go. There you go. All right. Next up, we have. The game everyone wants to wants to see. Primetime ABC. TCU at Oklahoma. The Sooners favored by 13 and a half. The line has shifted um, as the week has gone on from uh, minus 11 and a half to minus 13 and a half. OU is only covered once on a crazy, crazy, uh, that crazy touchdown that ended that Texas game. So, Ty, I got to ask, um, will we ever cover? Against TCU? Yes, are we going to cover <laughs> against TCU? So, I, if you remember, I don't know why I asked against TCU. Um, <laughs> you, Bobby you, did phrase it, will we ever cover, and y'all covered last week. So, I, well, I understand. Okay, I, I screwed up. I screwed up. No, so, but to be fair, to be fair to myself, um, on the previous couple podcasts, I have said that I am not going to pick OU again because I don't think that they're going to cover until Caleb Williams is the starting quarterback. OU was getting blown out until Caleb Williams started playing, and then we covered. So um, with questionable legalities, uh, but the Schooner Pod has independently confirmed through its own sources uh, that Caleb Williams is most probably the the starting quarterback. Uh, Just say it. Just say it was 100%. No, I mean it is. It is one hundred. I've seen it with my own eyes. Most it's just probably like, you know, is what you're saying. Just say he is going to be coming out as a starting quarterback. Well, you don't know what's going to happen between now and and uh, okay. you know the, the crosswalks this year a little crazier than the normal and stuff. So, um, but yeah. With that being said, I think naturally, OU and Caleb Williams is is the take here for sure, hands down. I, I put up a meme. Uh, I think before even the the dust had settled the other day about Caleb Williams having potentially five or six touchdowns in this game, which I don't think is unlikely. There you go. I love it. Uh, Blake, in our TCU preview, you did mention that you thought these two teams were very, very evenly matched. So I think I kind of know your answer here. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I thought 11 and a half was a steal when it came to the spread and now 13 and a half. Could maybe even trickle up to 14 and a half with this Caleb Williams news, but I thought Jameson framed it perfect on the preview pod the other day. Lincoln Riley's not giving them the entire call. Like, he's giving them just a fraction of the offense that he's going to be running this week. And I know TCU's defense is bad, but the Caleb Williams that we're going to see at the end of the season is not going to be the one that you're going to see against TCU. It's in his first career start, and I think TCU's offense is really – not elite this year, but very, very, very good with Zach Evans. And I think OU did a di- really good job at uh, – oh, like, you can say cold take all you want, but, like, OU did a good job somewhat of uh, stopping B. John Robinson. They still had 130 yards. Like, and I think TCU is well set to keep this in just a gunsling race where it's just all offenses. Like, 13 and a half points, like, they're – like – 
13 and a half points that you're relying on Caleb Williams, a guy who hasn't started a game yet to come out. No, like TC is a good enough offense. I have enough. I have enough pride in my school. I think it, they're going to at least keep it close. Like I'm taking some spread. I'm taking some money line because like, we just don't know. Caleb Williams is the solution for them in the future, but the future is not the week after OU Texas and what that's going to do. So give me TCU. I just think 13 and a half is ridiculous. I don't, I don't want to argue, but I, I do want to say coming in down 21 points in one of the biggest rivalry games in all of college football, I feel like is a little bit more pressure than but they didn't game play, starting like they, against TCU. He's playing with house money, though, at that point, because at that point, he's just like the new toy that they're bringing out that is doing well. But now he actually has to go out and perform like. What happens if I'm not saying this is going to happen probably this week just with how bad TCU's defense is, but like what happens if he comes out early and throws like two quick picks? Like what do you do as an OU fan? It's like you you want Caleb Williams because you know he's the future, but like Spencer Rattler does a decent job of not throwing – he throws pickable balls, but he doesn't throw picks. So it's like it could put you in a weird spot that it's just like – I'm, I'm just saying it's like it's easier to play with house money coming in with your back against the wall and you're just slinging it than you got to beat this frisky TCU team. But it was like Caleb Williams had just straight up poise. I, I don't know if it I, – I don't know how much of that was like a house money thing because just anyone out there well, I, it would be just nervous as hell in that experience. Yeah, but he, throws, he was totally fine. Yeah, but he throws some like – he throws some pickable deep balls. It's like – that's the difference between him, him and Radler is he's willing to take those deep shots, but deep shots means more picks, but also means could be more points. So it's just like it's, I, so the pickable balls he throws are deep instead of short. Yes, much. but I think it could like you're just trusting that like we saw Spencer Radler last year come out in the first few games and he was horrible, like actually like horrible losing games, horrible. And, like, Caleb Williams, I think, is going to be a significantly better quarterback in the future, but that doesn't mean instantly he's better than Rattler. I think he will be better than Rattler by the end of the season, but expecting him to come out and have, these, like, a complete command of the offense that is just head over heels better, like, I just don't get that. I don't get that coming in his first start. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Jameson, who do you got? I've been back and forth on this one, but my first inclination – when I first saw the line, you know, at 11, I'm going to stick with that because it's gotten better. And I'm going to go TCU. And my reasoning is what Blake was saying, and I hinted it on our, on our preview pod. It's because I don't think Lincoln's going to open up the whole playbook for Caleb. I think that he's going to baby him. And I think that Gary Patterson is a smart enough of a defensive coach to know that. And he's going to force Caleb to make the deep ball and make those deep throws. Um, I think Caleb is very capable of blowing this game open and we're going to give Kennedy Brooks the ball probably 20 to 25 times this game easy. Um, and if they can't stop that, we might run away with it. But at the same time, you know, I feel like our secondary is just going to get toasted with Delaire and Turner yell out again. And then uh, an unanswerable, you know, question at the cornerback outside cornerback positions. Um, so I'm not saying that we're on upset watch, but I think that OU does not cover and give me TCU plus 13 and a half. Uh, I'm with you. I think 13 and a half is way too many points for a team that hasn't played a complete ball game yet. Um, I mean, of course that Texas performance was remarkable. Uh, and if, of course, Caleb Williams looked remarkable, but we haven't seen a standard game where OU, OU has not proven to me that they can win by like this yet. I haven't seen it yet. I mean, uh, Western Carolina doesn't count, obviously. Um, so that, that's really my thing. I, I want to, I want to see him do it against legitimate competition. Uh, for me, this feels like a 10 point win to me. Um, uh, TC is just too wily, too scrappy to, to get like truly blown out. Uh, I, I think TCU backdoors, um, and gets this cover. It so was you, wild. To, oh, sorry, Bobby. No, go ahead. No, you, 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 you got it, Blake. But, like, what's wild, and I know last year was a little bit different because of how everything started with OU, but the spread in Fort Worth was six and a half last year, and, like, TCU had multiple losses. So did OU at that point whenever they played. But, like, still, like, I think TCU has improved significantly offensively, and we talked about it a little bit on the preview pod. It's, like, TCU's 
offensive line last year couldn't hold a second to give Duggan time. And this year, that's a huge difference. So you're saying this OU team this year, which has been wildly disappointing, is now seven points. And I know it's home field and stuff like that, but seven point difference versus I think an improved TCU offense. It just doesn't, it doesn't click with me as much. Like this just seems like total public hype of Caleb Williams coming off that game. And like, there's a difference. I just, I still think there's a difference between coming into a game in relief versus you got to go out and start and you got to perform from the first staff. I think there's just a little bit of a difference there. I mean, I, I, I feel that. I think that definitely could happen, but you know, also Caleb Williams could go out there and light it up. We'll just, yep. we'll just see, we'll just see how it pans out. Um, but anyways, <laughs> hey, if y'all want to hear more on that TCU OU game, we have a great, great uh, OU TCU pod with Blake in your feed, just right on below here. Make sure to check that out when we're done here. But we aren't done here because we have the wild card pick, and I'm gonna get us started here with a pick that. Uh, I loved earlier, don't love as much, but I'm still riding with it. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to take this game in the Carrier Dome, the Syracuse Orangemen, uh, to win by uh, 13 and a half. To uh, win. Or sorry, not to win, but to cover 13. To, <laughs> I, yes, they go with the Super Dogs with me this week. They're going, they're going to cover, I'm going with the Super <laughs> You know, I can see this being a super dog. Last, we, we've seen Clemson struggle in the Carrier Dome. We've seen Clemson struggle all year long. Uh, Syracuse, weird, scrappy team. They keep games close. Uh, almost beat the, the, the uh, Wake Forest Demon Deacons last week. Narrowly, uh, nice. narrowly pulled. There, yeah, there we go. That's that's the true like like scale of talent to me is how close did, were, were you to beating Wake Forest? Uh, so honestly, give me cues to cover 13 and a half. Love this at 14. Don't love it at 13 and a half. But uh, give, me the, give me cues and, you know, hey, sprinkle a little on the money line. It would be pretty fun. Let's have some fun with Syracuse. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I can do that. Um, so my, my turn. My, my, my turn. My, my, my turn. My, my, my turn. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, last year I fell in love um, with the team that is not to be named that has passed away and long gone. Boko. Um, and, 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 and I love <laughs> Don't, they don't, don't, four overtime win. And I know. And they did so great, and I'm very happy for them. But I, I've moved on. I'm, I'm a better man now. Um, but it seems like every year, like one of my colleagues on this podcast makes a bet, and I'm like, I really like that. I wish I could just slam the hell out of that. And that was Blake's last week with the Air Force versus Wyoming. I told him he should have just put his whole portfolio on it, and they covered. And it was great. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go against Wyoming again this week and give me Fresno State going on the road. They just lost on island to Hawaii, so that's pretty much putting them down. But going to on island, losing to Hawaii, you know, that's a tough loss, but it happens. It happens. Fresno State was a team at the beginning of the season we were talking about was pretty good. It's got some good players. You know, Blake was pretty high on them whenever we talked about them. And they're three-and-a-half-point favorites going to Wyoming, a team that, um, you know, just I, I don't know. I think that people are just saying, oh, wow, they're four-and-one, you know. They should be much better than this. I, I'm going to go Fresno here. I really like that pick a lot. I I hate it. I hate it. Oh, I'm no. on Wyoming this week. Oh, not, no. not, in my, not in my lock, but I will say I'm on Wyoming this week. Jake Hayner is hobbled right now. Like, he is, he is. hobbled bad. Oh, okay. I'm on That's so like after that UCL game, UCLA game, he, like, left everything he out, like, had out there. And it's just been, is like. Is he legitimately hurt, though? I don't think, like, hurt enough to keep him out, but, like, the Hawaii, like, loss is pretty, like, I think indicative of what's kind of going on with him. It's just, like, he's not 100%. Oh, that's and crazy. weird things happen. I don't know where Wyoming plays, but wherever in Wyoming. Is it Jackson? Jackson Hole? Like, that's the only that's the only town I know in <laughs> Wyoming, so. Bless it. I think it's Cheyenne? Cheyenne, okay, but I'm on Wyoming this week. Like I'm, I'm fading Fresno State. Ugh. Laramie, sorry, Laramie, Wyoming. Laramie. Ugh. I'm sorry, Jameson, but I'm not gonna go there. I wish like I would love the days whenever we got our wild card picks, just fighting. I'm not going there because this one I just Blake? think is. Yes? No? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, fair I, enough. I'm fair enough. I'm gonna use that later. I didn't like. I didn't like this slate enough to put a pot of grief pick. I'm not gonna trigger that. 
because my pick this week is just I feel like I'm bullying this team. Like this just feels wrong. Like I was like, this is so easy. It's just wrong. Marshall minus eleven at UNT. UNT is so bad. Seth Luttrell sucks as a coach. He's about to be K State's coach a few years ago. Fumbled that bag, and he's about to get fired at UNT. So, like, that's how quickly things change. And I looked up the advanced metrics on UNT. UNT's offense is 124th in the nation. Oh. They are bad. They are bad. They're 119th in pass and 106th in the rush. And they can't block. They can't pass block worth crap. Like, that's where it goes. They, they have no line. Their defense is 120th. So, like, this UNT team is, like, all-time bad. Like, they are now getting eclipsed by UTEP. Like, UTEP used to be that team you could always fade, but UTEP is now 5-1, and one, eclipsing them in kind of, like, the fringe Texas teams. I'm, like, looking to hit this every way. I've hit this with the under because I think Marshall's going to be the only one to score. I've already hit Marshall first half. I've hit Marshall full game. I'm probably going to go in alt spread probably by, like, 20 and a half by Marshall to beat UNT. Like, I think Marshall's taken a step back from last year, but this UNT team is so, so, so bad. This is just bullying. Like, this thing is, I am so happy for this game. It's a lock. This is done. This UNT team is so bad. Like, I thought last week with Wyoming, like, Wyoming at least was winning games. UNT is not. UNT is bad. They are bad people. So hop on Marshall right now. I love this pick. It's one of my favorite wild cards in them all season. We should be able to pot of greed alternate lines. Now that would be fun. That would be. That we'll, we'll look into that one. We'll look into that one day. Be... I love a good alt line. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, Ty. Who is your wild card of the week? All right. Game with a team that I'm known to pick. Okay, in a game with a team Arizona that State. we predicted that we would be picking oh, God. them off. And it has been disappointing. And I Blake may already know, all right, the game, Miami versus UNC. Gosh, Here oh, we go. Oh, I hate it. Uh, this UNC. Uh, that makes me sense. got away. UNC minus seven and a half. But here is what people aren't seeing. Sam Howe, abysmal all year. Miami. As I say, always go with Miami in the first three weeks and then fade them the rest of the season. Is that what's happening here? Let's look at the numbers, okay? Sam Howell currently has 1,697 pass yards on the season. That comes with 16 touchdowns, five interceptions, okay? Here's the important second number, though. His QBR is 151. You guys know what 1697 plus 151 is? I'll save you the, the quick maths. It's Damn, 1848. It. You guys know what happened in the year 1848? Gold was found in California. I know they're the 49ers. This might blow you guys' mind. They didn't have phones back then or <laughs> airplanes or the Panama Canal. So what they had to do was go all the way around. So they're called the 49ers because it took them like a year to get over there and start digging for the gold and create that hellhole of the state we now know as California. This is a gold rush game, okay? UNC has let everyone down all season. And they're going to get faded here, and they're going to push the line down because they've just been super disappointing. Spoiler alert, the expectations never should have been that high for Sam Howell and a Mac Brown coach team, okay? We knew better. We all knew better. Shame on us. You know, this is Mac Brown's, like, fool me fourth time that we've all fallen for this. So with that being said... You always fade Miami after week three. So give me North Carolina at home oh, in the God. Jordan jerseys no. by seven and a half. Ew. Stop. Stop. Seven and a half? Oh, that's so, so gross. Nasty. That's why no one you will realize touch You you're saying UNC's good because they've been so bad. Miami has been so bad. Plus, UNC just lost to Florida State. That Florida State team is so bad, Ty. They are so Yeah, but that's bad. not Miami. Miami's worse. But you would see Miami probably would beat Florida State. Like Florida, Florida State, State is, is really so bad. bad. Okay, okay. But by Blake's like declarations here, like you're saying that Arkansas is better than Bama this year? Like we can't just transitive property just because Miami. I'm not transitive it. property. I'm saying last week UNC lost to Florida State, and Florida State's a 
really bad team. I'm not saying Miami has beat them. I'm just saying <laughs> this Florida State team is so bad that is representative of how bad this UNC team is. They lost to Scrappy Dogs. <laughs> you guys are Scrappy <laughs> Dogs. Oh my god. You, oh my god. Uh, and all of all of Sam Howe's good performances happened in one game is versus UVA when they put up fifty nine points against them. He's been crap this entire year. I hate that game. I hate it. I look, I that is a fire the this game into the sun game for me. But it might work. I love it. I, I kind of like it. It's it's fun. And plus, look, things are looking up. Uh last week, Arizona State covered. So Ty, you know, maybe he's onto something. I just I want to about, point out to you for, for the listeners and for my fellow competitors here. All right. I did the gentlemanly thing. Arizona State's line currently, as I can find it everywhere, is even against Utah. It's literally a straight up pickup <laughs> against Utah right now. And I forewent this because the gold rush line here that no one's paying attention to. No, this gold is not rush a gold line. rush line. This it's is not seven a gold a- rush line. <laughs> Any seven and a half line is not is disgusting. It should be like taken out behind a shed. It's so bad. But Bo I have Jameson like... <laughs> and both Jameson and Ty have tested me using my pot of greed as like a principled stand. But I know I got to be a little bit more disciplined than, than that. Jameson's I mean... not as much because I understand it. But Ty's like I if Miami wasn't on the third string quarterback, like I think I would be slamming this like as a like as a principle because this UNC team, there is no way you can come up with a way to bet on this game. There is no way. Just like a spite pot of greed, just to like. Yes, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I gotta be disciplined. I gotta be. <laughs> I gotta be reasonable. But both oh of these gosh. teams are so bad. In seven and a half. Oh my god! Oh. This one is man's a... one man's trash is another <laughs> man's treasure. Ah, this is not <laughs> treasure, Charlie. This that's just broken people. glass. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh my! God. This is. This is a great. This is a great wild card slate because it's just it, uh, halfway informed picks, halfway just wild craziness, and I love it. Uh, but anyways, this, this I, one's not in halfway informed. It is just no. Inf- it is just no. I'm saying like half of the dark at something. No, <laughs> look, no. I'm saying I'm saying half of the picks are informed, like you and Jameson's, and then me and Ty just realized, I was like, I'm gonna go with the orange dude. No, and I had informed. a historical. I didn't even know the quarterback was hurt. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I had a tie into historical events. That's true. He did. He did. <laughs> this is why y'all listen. This is why y'all listen. Yeah, and if you don't, and, and if and look, if your friends don't listen, they should listen because you know the picks might be the picks are pretty par for the course across most people uh, betting. So like, you're not getting bad any worse picks than everyone else, and you get stuff like you know pot of greed and Ty giving us facts about the Panama Canal. So, it's great. I love it. Well, Jameson, Ty, Blake, this has been another great week of the weekend spread. And I am looking forward to seeing how this week shakes out. It's a very tight competition. Um, and y'all, if y'all like this, make sure to listen to uh, some of our other pods this week. We have a great TCU preview, as mentioned, uh, to cover a lot of the drama going on with the OU football team. And... Um, yeah, we're, we're going to be right back at it next week to cover more picks. So make sure to uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to see the visual version, uh, fo- subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great stuff there. We've got a new episode of Football Feast up. Cooked up some uh, bacon burn-ins. Blake, you might, you might want to check that one out. Uh, one of my favorites, Fort Worth Classic. It is so good. Um, and then, of course, uh, Schooner Sim, where where we uh, you know sim the game in uh, NCA fourteen, and that that one was that one was a fun one this week. So y- y- y'all should check that out. But, anyways, we will see y'all next time. Have a good one. Good luck out there.